Hi, this is Doug Schneider. Welcome back to Real Hi-Fi. As I said in a previous episode, I've been traveling quite a bit. And one of the places I went to was Denmark. And when I went to Denmark, I went to DALI, Danish Audiophile Loudspeaker Industries, now one of the largest loudspeaker manufacturers in the world. But despite DALI being pretty big, it still feels kind of small in that you can get all the nitty-gritty details from them. Details important to consumers buying hi-fi speakers. And when it comes to those details, there's no better person at DALI to get them from than the CEO, Lars War, who I talked for hours with the last visit. Now, of all our discussions, the topic about SMC, soft magnetic compound, I knew we had to put on video. It's a proprietary technology that DALI uses in the motor systems of their drivers to lower distortion. Distortion that's both measurable and audible. So it's important to you, a buyer or potential buyer. But Lars isn't the type to just talk about it. He likes to demonstrate it. So buckle up, because it's a pretty long demonstration, but I think you'll find it fascinating. So Lars, we're going to talk about something technical today. Unique to DALI, something called SMC in the motor systems of drive units. SMC stands for soft magnetic compound or composite. And it's, like I said, unique to DALI, and it has measurable and audible benefits, multiple. Can you describe what this stuff is and what it does? You could say SMC is a replacement for iron in um, important parts of the magnet system. And uh, SMC allows us to reduce eddy current losses in iron, which is inevitable when iron is in proximity with the voice coil, which happens to be the case in most loudspeaker drivers. Um, SMC uh, has taken electric conductivity down to almost zero so that when the voice coil starts moving, there won't be these small loops of eddy currents that will, depending on speed, slow down the driver in a nonlinear fashion. We actually remove the loss. It's a low loss philosophy now taken also to the magnet motor system. And iron is used in the majority of motor systems? Yes, drivers? yes. Uh, iron is used mainly as a transporter of magnetic flux and also to concentrate the flux field around uh, the essential parts of the voice coil. So it's, it's relatively difficult to design speakers without iron. It can be done, but it comes in handy in most designs. And with SMC, we get the magnetic properties of the iron, but not the electric properties, which is basically unwanted. You have a driver, an older Dali driver, using iron, right? Yeah. This is pretty traditional iron, uh, ferrite magnet, uh, traditional voice coil buildup. And I just want to show it because it's not particularly bad. Uh, it's not particularly uh, special. And uh, it characterizes, I would say, how 99% of drivers in the market will behave when it comes to uh, the distortion generated on the input current which is pretty interesting to observe because this is a current that would be there even if the driver doesn't move. Okay. Uh, just yes. if, you block, if you block the driver, it will occur on the input as a distortion if you put a voltage input in, which is what happens from your amplifier. Okay. So let's, let's roll and just see, um, let's say what I call the typical iron curve characteristic. We have here three volt input and we sweep it backwards. And the audio precision will measure the ratio between the undistorted signal and the distortion generated on a serial resistor. That means the current. Okay. And it just divides the two so that we get a ratio. And that was a frequency yeah. tweet that we heard. Yeah. And uh, the ratio is, is represented in percents. And you will see here, it's just a, a flat THD ratio. You will see around 0.4, 0.5% distortion on the input current at any frequency. And, and it, always there with that voltage yes, level. Yeah. yeah, and it will drop a little bit if we go down, but it won't disappear. So it's also a distortion that is present when we don't stress the driver. This is a realistic listening level. Uh, mm -hmm. not, is nothing good. extreme. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can. So this is distortion inherent in the signal? Uh, inherent in the signal when the driver is uh, receiving an uh, um, undistorted voltage okay. to begin with, yes. That also means that as it occurs on the input terminals as a current, you wouldn't be able to tell sonically 
whether it came from the amplifier or from the driver itself, it would be present anyhow. It's just there. So I would say, just as a comment to this, that if you were very keen on getting a better amplifier, just to optimize distortion, you would have to deal with this first. That's going to add to it, yes. regardless. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I won't make this too complicated, but basically here we have a driver where we took one part out. A Dali driver. It's a Dali driver. It's from the Opticon. It's an Opticon 6 base mid driver. And it uh, is designed around iron, but one play, one part is replaced. That's the pole piece. The pole piece is also the, I would say, the biggest contributor to current distortion because it's sitting in the core of the coil or the inductor, you could say. And that also means it's exposed to uh, probably more flux modulation than the rest of the parts. Okay. And um, when we replace it with the solid block or cylinder of SMC, we get a result which I would say is the most value we can create for that amount of investment and also the most important. So kind of hitting the most crucial area first to get biggest bang for the buck. Yes. And it's going to do the sweep again. Yep. And you may hear it now. We can talk. Yeah. Doesn't matter. And that is fairly loud. It's loud enough. Yeah. Okay, so I'll jump. Uh, I'll step over the Rubicon, which is actually substantially better than this. And I'll go to one of the first drivers we launched with SMC. Still one of the best we have. One of them. It's an Epicon 6, where we didn't just replace the pole piece, but also the outer ring surrounding the voice coil on the outside. So there is no proximity of iron in this driver near the voice coil any longer. So a step further. A step further and a combination with some aluminum rings uh, that will stabilize the flux modulation you know, on a macro level as well. So it's like a, a hybrid of all the, the tricks we know and optimized, of course, uh, geom uh, geometrically. So distortion is a big thing at Dali, getting it down. Well, it's one of the things we work with, and I don't want to make this a holy grail, but I have to say you need to address this. And there is a thing about eddy current distortion. It is, from a perception point of view, a very nasty type of distortion. It, it, it uh, generally produces mainly odd-order harmonic distortion. Okay. All those ear-unfriendly types of distortion that I could characterize as the sound of breaking glass and, and, and stuff like that, where's the... Uh, even order harmonics like the second and the fourth are more, your, your, your hearing is more forgiven. Uh, some would even say it, it might warm up, up the sound if it's yeah, yeah. put in in the right dose. Right? Yeah, this, this does effect on both types, but mainly on the order, order harmonics. Okay. Here we go, Epicon. And I can already say it has a fantastic uh, performance when it comes to current distortion. And you need to look carefully now. So you said this was 6.7 dB. Yeah, it's like a uh, reduction a little bit more than half. But now yeah. now we're totally out of the curve. Uh, so oh. we're, we're like 20 dB down at least. Oh, well, that's a huge reduction. I was yes. expecting to see a little one. That's a huge reduction. It's huge. And it's also like we're still very, very proud of the Epicon because it's really what makes it so, you know, unstressing to listen to. And it also means you can actually do a pure flat frequency response without worrying. I think some of the voicing tricks you and you know in the industry is actually to turn down the level a little bit where you have the distortion. So it's yeah. not as noticeable. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what what you see is actually there's still distortion left in uh, in the bottom end because SMC doesn't actually address that. Uh, it's a phenomenon that comes from let's say lower mid range and up. Okay. But the mid range is where we're very sensitive. The hearing and all. Yes. Well, now, that's the brand new uh, Epicor 11 woofer. Okay. And I will even endorse it for relative good behavior in mid-range and treble. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a holy grail for us, by the way, that any driver should have much bigger bandwidth than what it was actually intended for. Okay. We need to make sure that the drivers can assist each other, blend seamlessly, and not screw it up in the other driver's Domain. In other words, they can play beyond oh, yeah. their limits. Yes, several octaves, okay. and 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 in that respect, we also have to care about distortion, mm -hmm. because we wouldn't be happy if a woofer created a lot of distortion that turned out to be present in the mid range. Right. 
then we can have as good a mid range as we we can dream of, Just but it's ruined. It up, yeah. Oh yeah, and you can probably already imagine that. I want to show you a new improvement here. Yeah, and uh, that's why we are. This is the first time we're doing it. Yeah, so you must be confident in it. It's not the first time for me. <laughs> I like your sense for suspense. Let's see. Yeah. So what you see is that with the Epicor, we managed to set up the, the magnet system so that we even got an effect Ooh, way down over here. Layers. And then it's somewhere yeah. down here. So, so I mean, when, when, what kind of level? I guess. While, while we are in the noise floor, basically. So, so lower than the analyzer itself. Uh, so like well, level. at least the, uh, the analyzer in a noisy environment. So, And I, I would say we, we can go as far down as we like, and we'll see, of course, eventually some distortion there. It's a little bit academic uh, because we have, you know, we are loudspeakers here. We are not in electronics, and we right. have to deal with realities. And loudspeakers uh, generally have much, much more distortion. Yeah, but... But but you are right that I would say on the best designs we have it can be uh, it can be a problem measuring it unless we have a, you know sufficient level because there will be noise induced into the driver as it's also a microphone mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that will be included as well but I would say what you notice here is of course an extremely low distortion from 200 hertz and up on the input current but also a substantial reduction in the very bass. And as it is a woofer, you know, we can really say that comes in handy. And this is one of the areas where we learned something from the core, but we didn't use the core design principles the core to the being end. The flagship speaker. The flagship speaker. In the core, we have, and that's, I have it here, it's a very heavy driver. It's around 15 kilos. We actually addressed the low frequency part as well. So now, by using the balanced drive, we combine the SMC with another technique where you sort of mirror out the nonlinearities in the low frequencies. And this is the only way we could come up with that really addresses the distortion down in the deepest place. Balanced drive? Yes. The balanced drive with SMC in the core of the driver yeah. gets you, I would say, the perfection that... So all the SMC... Plus the balanced drive yes. topology. Well, yes. It's a hybrid technology where the balanced drive takes care of the lower frequencies and the SMC makes sure that it doesn't run away in the, in the top frequencies. That's a massive driver. Yes. It's basically two magnet systems put side by side. And they cancel out all the uh, nonlinearities by mirroring the nonlinearities. Okay. And how can we know it's the same current in both gaps? Well, it's the same wire. Oh. It just spins in the opposite direction when it reaches number two. So we know it's the same current in both. There is no other current. Let's give it a shot. I need to hold it for vibration only, as this is a little simple set. Did it wobble off the table? No. It's mainly the resonance that might pick up in the mi microphonic. Oh, yeah. Okay. Have a look. That was loud enough, I'm guessing it's going to clip our sound. Yeah. Let's see. But it's plenty loud, a small voltage. Well, it's non-existent. Well, it's there, but barely. very low level of distortion. And we are still looking at a driver in free air. That means mm -hmm. it is still moving. So this may not even be from the current distortion. This may be small nonlinearities in the s suspensions, which are not totally symmetric. Right. But, I mean, we are down at such a low level that I'd say mission accomplished. And the good thing about the Epicor, where we don't have this technology, is that we got some of that way by raising the ambitions uh, from what we learned with the core. So that was sort of an inspiration for, you know, aiming for much more ambitious goals. And we achieved that. What I like is it's one thing to talk about something. Mm -hmm. It's another thing to show it. Yeah. And that demonstrates it. Well, yeah, and I mean, again, this is not a proof of, of, of the, the oh, tolling really? thing. It's just that we have been on the lookout for other approaches on showing the effect of SMC. And I think, when I think about how much people care about amplification and matching with their speakers, this has to be addressed, I would say, before anything else. And, and the speaker level. Yeah, and you know, if you are in loudspeaker engineering, you'll 
hear about people who once in a while say, I want to build a speaker with current drive, because with current drive, I can eliminate my current distortion. Mm -hmm. The problem is, if you start driving drivers with current drive, you lose the control of the driver because you have an infinite uh, low damp damping factor. Yeah. And, uh, and that's... You know, that conflicts with other things we want to do, which is to control the driver according to the amplifier's preference. I mean, the amplifier is controlled by the music. We need to obey to that. And um, by using SMC, we sort of achieve the same goal, but we solve the problem at the source right. instead of compensating for, for it, it with electronics. electronics. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, that was fascinating. Thank you very much. Thank you. So that was my second trip to Dali, a company I really like going to. And why is that? Well, because, like I said at the beginning, they're big, but they're also small. In the sense that you can get all the nitty-gritty detail from the team there or from the CEO himself. And why is that? Well, when Lars War started at Dali decades ago, he was a loudspeaker engineer. And even though he's running the whole thing today, he keeps his hands in all the parts, he knows exactly what's going on, and that's good to see if you ask me. It's one thing to talk the talk, it's another thing to walk the walk, and he can do both. I hope you found that informative. Thank you for watching.